First, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, start by thanking the Center for International Forestry Research for so clearly having focused on the link between forests and climate change. And this week, leaders from the whole world assemble here in Copenhagen because we must curb global warming. All nations of the world are focused now on how to reach an agreement which will effectively limit greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. To succeed, all countries need to contribute consistent with their capabilities and all major sources of emissions regulated. Alarmingly, we are currently destroying forests at a rate that, as we heard, generates 17% of our global annual carbon emissions. This accounts for almost a fifth of global man-made greenhouse gas emissions. So it goes without saying, if deforestation continues at the current level, there is simply no way we are going to reach our target of keeping the increase in global mean temperature under two degrees and not to speak of hopefully even 1.5 degrees Celsius. In contrast, by preserving and better managing our forests, global carbon emissions can be significantly and rapidly reduced at a reasonable cost while we protect the livelihoods of local communities and indigenous peoples. This will also contribute to maintaining biodiversity, rainfall patterns and soil quality and help countries adapt to climate change which is already happening. Our Common Future, the report we published more than 20 years ago, was one of the first international documents to address the issue of global warming. We pointed to deforestation as a cause of global warming and warned, and I quote, that more than 11 million hectares of tropical forests are destroyed per year, and this, over 30 years, would amount to an area about the size of India, end of quote. I'm sorry to say that time has proven us right. According to FAO figures, there has been no observable reduction in the global deforestation rate since 1987. We are still on our way towards destroying an area the size of India by 2017. Now, on the one hand, the climate crisis can help us save the world's forests. Yes, paradoxically enough, the crisis not only can, but indeed must catalyze a salvage operation for the world's forests. If we are to survive, we simply have to stop destroying our biggest terrestrial carbon store. Scientists also warn that continued global warming could create a massive forest dieback where forests convert from being massive sinks of carbon to becoming a gigantic additional source of carbon emissions. On the other hand, forests can contribute to solving the climate crisis. Forests have to play a key role in our fight against climate change. Reports on the potential of forests in climate change mitigation indicate that stopping deforestation and promoting afforestation and reforestation could deliver 30% of the cost-effective potential. This will be important both to sustain public support over time and to minimize negative effects for the global economy. There are few areas where the mutual interest between the developed and developing countries are as obvious and as tangible as in the negotiations on a mechanism for reduced emissions from deforestation and forest degradation, enhancement of carbon stocks, conservation and sustainable management of forests in developing countries, also known, of course, under the less breathtaking name Red Plus. Two overarching commitments 
um, are needed to get red off the ground. Firstly, the developed nations must commit to compensate the developing nations economically for reducing emissions from deforestation and forest degradation and for enhancing the storage of carbon in their forests. Secondly, the developing nations must commit to produce these reductions in environmentally, socially and economically sustainable ways. This must be done in a transparent and verifiable manner and the rights of the people living off the forest must be respected. So unlocking the potential of forests to climate change mitigation represents a major opportunity for world leaders to show real responsibility and leadership here in Copenhagen. There seems to be broad agreement between the parties in the negotiations that Red Plus should be included in the post-2012 climate regime. However, there is much less agreement on how the Red Mechanism should be designed. We now need progress on this key challenge. Forests are under threat and time is of the essence. These are some essential decisions that would facilitate urgent action on Red Plus. A financing mechanism to cover the upfront costs of developing countries' preparations for Red and to pay the developing countries for verified emissions reductions from forests. A phased approach that allows developing countries in varying, cir in varying circumstances or preparedness for red to get involved. And an incentive structure that is performance-based and designed to stimulate higher quality monitoring, reporting, and verification. A process to finalize negotiations on the detailed design of the mechanism within a year. Now, an informal working group on intermediate funding of RED was established by world leaders for the G20 meeting in April. And they found that the world could achieve a 25% reduction in global deforestation rates by 2015. This would cost 15 to 25 billion euros and reduce CO2 emissions by 7 billion tons between 2010 and 2015. Such an initiative would deliver far greater mitigation at far lower cost than any other proposal that is currently on the table for coming years. This in itself should inspire the North and the South to come together in identifying workable solutions and soon. If key decisions on Red Plus are included in the outcome of next week's high-level negotiations, the prospects for the world's climate and our forests will be immensely improved. Now, in the midst of all this, we need to remember that forests are more than carbon sinks. As we heard, some 1.6 billion people, almost 20% of the world population, rely heavily on forests for their livelihoods. More than 2 billion people, a third of the world's population, use biomass fuels, mainly firewood, to cook and to heat their homes. Billions rely on traditional medicines harvested from the forest. In some 60 developing countries, hunting and fishing on forested land supplies over a fifth of protein requirements. The world's forests contribute billions, if not trillions, of dollars to the global economy through biodiversity, soil conservation, and flood control. 